TBG at all. Hi, and welcome to the TBGS podcast. This is episode 16. And I'm in the studio today with my son, James. So Hello. To- oh, so today I have a guest with me. Well, yeah. So we're going to chat as we as I normally do, but this time James is with me to chat about our shelves of ambition. You're going to chat with a person instead of with yourself today. Yeah. Oh, well, or a refreshing change. It will be <laughs> nice, but you know what I normally do? I normally imagine the person or the people's. And in actual fact, I know then when anybody's listening to this, it's only one set of ears that is listening at a time. Mm. So then Usually. I just could be more. Oh uh, yeah, people could put it, I suppose. And yeah. I just think of speaking to somebody in mm. their ears and I think about what a privilege that is. And I really just imagine talking to that person. But today I'm sitting talking to James, so it's a little different. But anyway, so today, James, <laughs> I wanted us to carry on talking about shells of ambition, mission, because that has been the thing I've been talking about in these podcasts, And but you're here with me today. So so what I wanted us to chat about was our recent shells of ambition mission game that we've been playing on the weekend, which was Gloomhaven, mm. Jaws of the Lion. Is that what it's called? Jaws of the Jaws of the Lion. No, it's just Jaws of the Lion. Joys, joys. <laughs> Actually, that was not the right word to use. Joys, because <laughs> I didn't find too much joy in this game. And Jamie kept on asking me when we're playing, "Are you having fun?" And I was sitting there scratching my head and putting uh, your head in your hands and, and sighing <laughs> and looking very confused at everything you were trying to do. <laughs> and what was my biggest problem? I'm not. Wasn't a fan of the story. Yeah. And I am very theme story based person, so I play games largely for that. I thought, but we've since discovered that I actually quite like games that have got strategy and. Well, Jaws of the Lion has all that. It's just not the kind of strategy you're after. Yes, <laughs> because I tend to veer away from combat games, as we yeah. know. And basically, that's what Jaws of the Lion is, which mm. is. For anyone who doesn't know, a distilled version of Gloomhaven, mm. which came out in 2017. Big, sprawling, epic RPG in a box. And you played it then? Um, I have played it once years ago. A friend had a copy, and he was all very excited about it, and we gave it a whirl. And three or four hours later, we had finished one chapter of the <laughs> campaign and I was like okay that took a bit too long for my liking <laughs> okay but you did have in mind that this Gloomhaven was something that kept on piquing your interest until yeah. one day when we were in the Cape well RPGs in general have piqued my interest over particularly recent years mm. so yeah while we were in the Cape recently yeah what happened is we went to this um, board game shop that we found we were very delighted to find a nice board game shop here in South Africa. And what was on the shelves? Gloomhaven, mm. Jaws of the Lion. And I must say, the artwork on the cover really got my attention. I thought, ooh, that looks so beautiful. And we were very disciplined because we're doing our <laughs> shelves of ambition mission. <laughs> we thought, okay, we'll get that, we'll take it home, and we'll put it aside, and we'll carry on playing some of our other games, right? Yeah. And we'll save the Jaws of the Lion. I mean, sorry, Jaws of the line, until we've got a whole weekend that we can dedicate mm. to it. Plus, I didn't want to start playing until I'd painted all the minis. That's true. Of which there are only four. So uh, but, it didn't take terribly long. But, and then mm. you had those beautiful cards. I mean, the components mm. in this game are really nice. Yeah, but, very, very good. So Jamie sat Top there. stuff. Yeah. Jamie sat there um, painting each little mini to match the artwork on the card as best he could. So we waited for that to be done. And then this past weekend was the weekend when we took out Jaws of the Lion mm. and it got to the table. And what transpired is we've decided that Jamie's going to carry on playing it solo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a, a one to four player game, which shall be played with one going forward. Yeah. And we've also decided... Primarily we've... because... Mm. Sorry, yeah. No, I was going to say, we've also decided that I can just hop in and out if you find one of the campaigns has got quite yeah. a nice uh, see, uh, theme in it that will help me to just hop into the story and mm. join you on your adventure and hop out again. Because mm. you can do that, right? 
Will we yeah. try that? Well, in theory, I haven't yet tested that theory. Mm. Um, we, so basically, it plays over the first five sessions are meant to be a tutorial, basically. Yep. So your first five scenarios, campaigns, chapters, whatever, mm. are the tutorial where it's slowly spoon-feeding you all the different rules. Mm. And we've only played up to scenario three. We played over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And it's at scenario three that you have decided to check out because the the story as a bit of a content warning for anyone listening, if you're on the fence about Jaws of the Lion, it is more on the grim, dark fantasy side of the spectrum. Well, I've got another adjective that I use. <laughs> I called it gory, but I yeah. suppose in some people's book, it's not really gory, it's light. But for me, it no, was gory. Relatively gory. So but you know who you, I want to thank? If that's not your cup of tea, then err on the side of caution. <laughs> mm. Okay, well, you know who I want to thank is Rodney. Thank you, Rodney, from Watch It Played, because we watched one, his first tutorial, and we went and played. And then we watched the second one and played, and the third one and played. And I, 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 it was just amazing. He is so, so, so good at teaching the mechanics and the, you know, everything. I just, I was very grateful for his videos. But in spite of that, I'm not going to continue playing Jaws of the Lion. <laughs> oh, I feel quite sad. I said to Jamie last night that actually I really want to like it. I really want to love mm. this game because there's many things about it that I do like. Mm. It's just it puts me off this the, the, the elements that are getting stronger and stronger in mm. it are the things mm. that are actually putting me off it. And it's just, just my choice. Yeah, that's um, just personal taste. Personal you know, taste, everyone, yeah. To their own. And yeah, I, I did a bit of further research on it. And from what I can tell, that trend is going to continue mm. through the rest of the campaign. Um, it is only, only <laughs> 25 missions. Oh, whole, is that all? Just only 25? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's a lot less than the hundred and something that you get in really? original Gloomhaven, yeah. Or even more in Frosthaven. Really? It made it even longer. So, so our Shells of Ambition has happened. I mean, we did play this weekend, and I would really love to dive into something that has 25 campaigns. Mm. I'm not sure so much about a game that's got a hundred and something, <laughs> but anyway... Well, that's why Jaws of the Lion exists, because there's a lot of people who aren't sure about a 100-plus mission okay. campaign. So Jaws of the Lion is a prequel to the events of Gloomhaven. So if you've already played Gloomhaven or are playing Gloomhaven, you can basically add Jaws of the Lion as a prequel to the events in original Gloomhaven. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have played Gloomhaven, you can still play this, and it just gives you new character classes and things you can add. So it kind of works as a like mini expansion to Gloomhaven, or what we're experiencing is it's a introductory game. It's a, a more condensed version, so you can you can try it out, test it out, and see if it's a system you're going to like. And I think there's two things basically that I think you've bounced off of with it. One is the story is just a bit darker than your preference. You don't really go in for the grim, dark, high fantasy type stuff. No, I'm not a fan of the grim dark stuff. And the other thing, which is more the core, because again, I've done a bit of digging and from what I've picked up, the story, and I was picking this up already, the story is quite light as far as the amount uh, of story, the right. amount of narrative is pretty minimal. There's not a huge amount of actual written narrative. But we don't know that yet. No, but what? I'm saying I've looked oh. ahead. Oh, you looked I ahead. I looked ahead, so no spoilers for myself, but... Mm. I've done a bit of reading and I've read a couple of reviews and things and people have spoken about the fact that the story of it, the story elements are quite minimal. Is that for Gloomhaven as well or is particularly for Jaws of the Lion? Um, I think it's a bit of both. So basically what Gloomhaven is, I don't know about Frosthaven enough, but from what I've understood, I think Gloomhaven and now Jaws of the Lion, the story itself is there. And I actually remember this from when I played original Gloomhaven years back, there was a tiny bit of story and then three hours of tactical combat gameplay and then a tiny bit of story. Uh, that's also so the why it's game not my thing. is the tactical combat. So oh, I think right. for a lot of people, they can even switch off, even if the story isn't something that they're partial to. If you're enjoying the tactical combat gameplay, 
then you can enjoy it in spite of the story, which I would say is what's the case for me. I enjoy the actual mechanisms of playing uh, right. out the game and what, what you're having to think about and what you're having to do. So I would prefer it if the story was a little brighter, a little mm. more But you kind of get, going, you but get I can lost kind of, in the mechanics. Yeah. yeah. The, the story is less overtly dominant on me. Okay. But, you know, this when we started these podcasts, we spoke about Seventh Continent. I just want to go back to where we started with this podcast, not this particular episode, but right at the beginning where we spoke episode about… Episode one of the TBGS podcast. Was it episode one? Yep. Okay, that was about the Seventh Continent. Mm-hmm. And that is my thing. Oh, my goodness, I love that game. Now, I don't know how many campaigns. You mentioned Gloomhaven's got 100-and-something campaigns. I don't know how many there are in Seventh Continent continent but i do know that we've played 60 something hours of that game Thereabouts, and i'm more. not tired of it and i and there's no uh, there's nothing in it nothing at all that i find off putting or not that i want to say that about uh, gloomhaven but as we've said it's just really a personal taste thing you know for me this this aspect of Gloomhaven that I don't particularly enjoy, that tactical combat thing yeah. all the way through. Which is 90% of the game. <laughs> and Seventh Continent has absolutely none of that. Mm. So, no, it's a, there's tiny smidges of combat, but you're hardly any. It's very much, it's all survival. And survival and adventure and exploring. Problem solving and, and puzzles mm. and... Yeah, so that is our Shelves of Ambition mission that we've been on on the weekend. Uh, interesting um, results from that experience, not what I was expecting. A but, journey of self-discovery and gaming preferences. <laughs> yes. In actual fact, that's what is happening with our Shelves of Ambition. I've mentioned it a few times now that as we're playing more and more and more, even of the same game, we're realizing, oh, this is parts of this game is what I really love a lot and not so much this other part of it and so on and so forth. So it's it's a nice discovery, actually. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to carry on pressing on. Now, we had um, a friend last weekend come and he played board games, a board game enthusiast, fortunately, because we like playing board games all weekend. And he said, wow, that's quite ambitious. I said, that's why it's called Shelves of Ambition when we were Ooh. telling him all about our... Um, experiences and we could add our games that we played with him to our shelves of ambition mission as well so i don't know if there's others that are doing something along the lines of shelves of ambition but we're certainly enjoying ours and are you jamie Mm. no i am enjoying getting more games to the table and yeah. Getting them to the table more repeatedly you know and that discovery yeah have you found that as well for yourself discovering what you like and don't like yeah, him. I've been finding one thing that I definitely like is variety. So I enjoy playing lots and lots of different kinds of games. Mm. And I also enjoy the campaign type games where you're playing the same game over and over and over and over and over. Mm. But I would probably prefer it if those campaign type games kept a lot of variety coming. So uh, right. had something different that you were experiencing all the time. Mm. And... Yeah, I enjoy a wide range of games, I would say. I just enjoy the act of gaming, Mm. (laughs) basically. Well, and I have enjoyed having you to chat to today rather than me, as I said, just on my own here doing the TBGS podcast. So I've enjoyed having a guest on the show. (laughs) And why don't you you close off with your your line, Jamie, that you do for the, the videos? Well, if any of you know the videos and have been watching them for a while, you'll know I end everyone with, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the show. (laughs) And so now they didn't watch, they listened, so you have Mm. to change it now. Okay. Thank you ever so much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the show. There you go. Okay, bye. I'm off to make tea. Bye.